I would say one of the things that is perhaps the toughest thing is the previous era AI expert is the one that is going to have the hardest time shifting to this new paradigm because oh. everything, all the assumptions, oh my God, here's my data, I'm going to train on that data, my data is the only thing that matters. All that's now questioned. You now have a large model which can be used as a retrieval engine on your data that's going to perform better than sort of what, something that you trained on for your on your data. I mean, just the intuition, just so that people have what this is, is suppose you train a model on, let's say, all the math formulas. Yeah, it'll, it'll get pretty efficient in math. But let's say you train a model on all the math formulas and all the human text there is on the web. It gets better at math. And you say, wow. How is that possible? Of course it's possible, because when we went to school, it's not like we just learned math. We learned math, we learned history, we learned language. And so, yeah, so something, so that emergent capability is a pretty different thing than like where we were even a couple of years ago as state of, art, state of the art in terms of AI. Do we, so, do we need to learn math anymore? What, why learn math? Or, or let, me, let me tell you, I, I'm an electrical engineer who never understood the Maxwell's equations. So now I finally get, thanks to ChatGPT, a better understanding of it. So I think one of the things is we will all enjoy a lot more math because we will have that personalized <laughs> tutor who will, in fact, be able to intervene at the crucial time when you're making a conceptual mistake yeah. and help you learn. So just imagine that. Just ma what if there was a fantastic tutor teacher for every student learning math going forward? Yeah. That is now possible. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, it's great to see all of you in Seattle in person. It's an exciting time uh, in tech. Uh, I just want to share a couple of anecdotes which give me great hope. Uh, quite honestly, it gives me personally a lot of satisfaction around working at Microsoft, working in this industry to push the state of the art of technology. The first one, you know, obviously when uh, Sam and his team late last year launched ChatGPT, that's the only thing anybody, your friends and family wanted to talk about throughout the holidays. It was just crazy. Uh, how, you know, it was like the mosaic moment, the closest we've come. It's what, been 30 years now? Uh, since when Mosaic launched, which I distinctly remember. Um, and it was a very exciting time. So I, I, was on all, I, I went on a holiday first, and then I was in the first week um, in India, uh, of January I was in India. Uh, and on, my, on Jan 1st, uh, I look at my news feed and I see this tweet uh, that Andrej Karpathy put out, uh, who is, you know, uh, ex-OpenAI and Tesla and... Uh, and is now an independent AI developer. And uh, he had this thing about the product that really he was ex most excited about the previous year was GitHub Copilot. And he was saying how 80% of his code was being generated by this, I would say, first at scale product built on NLM technology. And you know, it's, th th this doesn't mean he's 80% somehow not doing his work. In fact, it's, he's getting so much more leverage. Uh, and in fact, recently we crossed 100 million developers on GitHub. And think about this, right? There are 100 million developers on GitHub. If we can improve their productivity, just like how Andrej uh, was able to sort of uh, you know, uh, uh, observe, and then let's say in the next decade, we double that number, maybe double it again, right? They cl get close to a half a billion developers. What economic opportunity it would create because there is not a meeting that I go to today with any CEO, CXO of any organization who's not looking for more software developers, more digital skills. That's the currency in every part of every, every sector of the economy in every country of the world. That's the opportunity we have to be able to take this technology and make a difference. But then the next day, I uh, went to Mumbai, and then I saw this demo. This was just, for me, the most profound thing that I've seen in a long, long time. The demo was actually built by the Ministry of Electronics in India because they're building out a digital public good. Their idea is, look, India has got you know, multiple 
official languages, and they wanted to democratize, essentially, access to language translation. So they're building it out as a digital public good. In fact, Microsoft and Azure and Microsoft Research are all involved in that project. And uh, so this is basically speech to text, text to speech across all of the languages in India. And um, so they showed me this demo where a farmer uh, speaking in Hindi expresses a pretty complex thought about how he had heard about some, some government program and wants to apply for a subsidy uh, that he, he thinks he's eligible for. And so it's a pretty complex prompt query. Um, the, the, the technology does a good job. It goes to the bot, recognizes the speech, comes back and says, you know what, you should go to this portal, fill out these forms, and you'll get your subsidy. So he says, look, I'm not going to go into any portal. Uh, I'm not going to fill out any forms. Can you help me? And he does it. And then I was told that a developer said, OK, you know what? Let us daisy chain a model that was trained on all of the documents of the government of India using GPT and with this speech recognition software. So basically, two models coming together to really help a rural farmer in India trying to get access to a government program. Look, I grew up in India. I dreamt every day that someday the Industrial Revolution will get evenly distributed across the world. And here I was, seeing something so profound, something that was developed by the folks at OpenAI in the West Coast of the United States a few months earlier, used by a developer locally to have an impact on a rural farmer. That, to me, is what gives me meaning and I think gives us all meaning in our industry. So it is just fantastic to see that. And so what is it that we should do and what should we build? I think that this technology is going to reshape pretty much every software category we know. I mean, we've seen that, right? When we've saw, if you think about the web, we've had, what, three at least very distinct platform shifts that have shaped the web. The web was born on the PC and the server. And then it evolved with mobile and cloud. And now the question is, how is AI going to reshape the web? Um, and each time, in each one of those phases, some real foundational technology layers, sometimes I describe them as these organizational layers of technology, were born, right? The browser was the first one. Uh, without the browser, the web would have not been as popular as it is today. Same thing with search. Search organized the web. Uh, and then when it came to the mobile generation and mobile and cloud, in fact, these super apps, especially outside of the United States, uh, around messaging became the way people consumed the web. Uh, we also had uh, app stores. So the question is, what are the constructs? What are the organizing layers going forward? You'll see some of that today. We think there are two things that are emerging. One is this conversational intelligent agents. I think they're going to be things that we are going to have everywhere we go. All computer interaction is going to be mediated with an agent helping you. In fact, we're going to have this notion of a co-pilot that's going to be there across every application canvas inside of an operating system shell in a browser. And so we want to show you some of this innovation, starting with how it's going to reshape the largest software category on planet Earth, which I've been working on for a long time, which we are very, very excited about, search. And it's a new day uh, in search. It's a new paradigm for search. Rapid innovation is going to come. In fact, a race starts today in terms of what you can expect. And we're going to move. We're going to move fast. And for us, every day, we want to bring out new things. And most importantly, we want to have a lot of fun innovating again in search, because it's high time. We have been on a 30-year journey to perfect it. So I'm excited to be here in 2023 launching Bing with AI. Bing with AI is going to completely change 
what people can expect from search. We are grounded in the fact that you know Google dominates this space. I, I feel like a new race is starting with a complete new platform technology. I'm excited for the users to have choice finally and a real competitive race out there. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella finally thinks he has what it takes to make Bing happen and grab some search engine market share from Google. His not-so-secret weapon? This all started with us and OpenAI coming together with really a research agenda on moving uh, the state of the art of AI forward. Microsoft is taking OpenAI's newest artificial intelligence model and intertwining it with Bing's search data so you can chat with the search engine and get up-to-date information. So the entire point of ChatGPT early on was to just sort of show the power of the large model and the conversational intelligence. We now have not only the current information that you usually expect from a search engine, but you can then have a full conversation around that current information and all the other information that came before. On top of the new AI chat features in Bing, Microsoft is adding ChatGPT-like features to its Edge browser. So I came here to Microsoft's headquarters in Redmond, Washington, to get a hands-on demo of the new tools and hear Nadella's thoughts on AI. The first big new feature, Bing Chat. Incorporated right into the front page of Bing will be an Ask Me Anything box. Type in your query, say, The biggest winners of the 2023 Grammys, because I did not have time to watch it. And up pops your usual search results, which Nadella says has also been improved with AI. But more interesting is this new chat box that will start typing out an answer to the question. As it answers, it also includes citations so you know where the information is coming from. It allows me to then have a full-on conversation around all the search data. So yes, it's annotated. It's about being able to create even the links back to all the publishers. So this is just search, just better. The system took about a minute to return a list of the top Grammy winners. Not exactly fast but you can tell it to stop responding. Then you can ask follow-up questions like, Do you know if Beyonce is touring? Yeah. If you're a Beyonce fan, you might want to hurry and get your tickets before they're gone. Like ChatGPT, you can ask it non-search type things too. Like, Write 10 questions for Satya Nadella about AI. What are the key features and benefits of new Bing chat mode? And how does it leverage AI to enhance the user experience? It really is grounded in search results and helps me have a very contextual chat uh, to be able to get to the right answers. Sacha Bing said, or AI Sacha said, the new Bing chat mode leverages AI to understand the user's intent, <laughs> context, you said context, and preferences to provide relevant, visual, logical, and actionable responses. I love the AI Satya. Yeah. But while these may seem like fun and games in these demos, there are, of course, real misuses of this technology. We have a lot of practice uh, in thinking about safety. AI is only good if it is being used in the real world, understanding, learning human preferences. And our intent is to do that, which is to put stuff out there with safety, but at the same time realizing that we are going to have to think about safety as an ongoing responsibility, not a one-time responsibility. He also told me there are guardrails in place to prevent harmful content, hate speech, and more. The second big feature, Microsoft Edge integration. The Microsoft Edge browser will now have a Bing sidebar where you can ask it to summarize a web page you're on or ask it to generate text. For instance, I asked it to... So I want to write about a letter to Satya Nadella, thanking him for his time. Then I was able to tell it I wanted it written in an enthusiastic tone, in email form, and short. It knows, pretty that's pretty good. There's a lot of fear that AI is going to take our jobs, replace us. Is that unfounded? And how do you think about tools like Bing now and how we use it in the job market? Like I, I, I think of this as, at, at the foundational level, going to help us do our jobs better, reduce some of the drudgery in some of our jobs, uh, whether it's in coding or in writing or in uh, automating a workflow or searching for information. So at the fundamental level, I think we need a productivity boost. I feel it'll create more jobs. The barriers to knowledge work will come down. So 
I mean, the unintended consequences around labor market shifts are always something we need to be mindful of. But I don't subscribe to this zero sum uh, or one lump of labor fallacy. And I think that we're going to have new jobs get created and more job opportunities. And it sounds like more time, right? For sure. For sure. We outsource some of this. So I outsourced some of my question writing to this freed up a little bit more of my time to do something else. And But you're still in, in the loop and you're in charge because you will, you get to accept the draft. That's kind of one of the metaphors I have. It's pretty much all computer interaction going forward. You'll start with a draft. That doesn't mean you don't get to inspect the draft, approve the draft, and redefine or re, you know and, and edit the draft. The question is, which company will write that draft for us? Will it be Microsoft with tools like this? Or Google, which owns 90% of the search engine market share. And right before my interview with Mr. Nadella, announced BARD, its similar AI chat feature that will come to its own search engine. How are you thinking about monetizing this? The last time I checked, software, I mean, it's a search, was the most profitable category uh, there is on planet Earth. So therefore, all I need is a few more users uh, and someone else that I'm competing in has to keep all of their users and all of their gross margin. It's a love, I'm looking forward to that. So no plans to charge for new Bing. It's really advertising model all the way through. We'll start there. And if, we, if there are other models, there may be other models, uh, but there is enough surplus. Let me put it this way. There is so much surplus that goes to one place, which I think would be nice if it was evenly distributed.